What do soursop, sweet soap, and papa have in common? If you are a tropical fruit tree lover, you surely know that they belong to the Anonesi family of plants. I made a few videos on them, including one where I show how I make tea with soursop leaves and briefly touch on the health benefits. In this video, I'm going to talk about the dangers of consuming Anonas. Sounds frightening, right? Should you stop eating sweet sops or drinking soursop leaf tea? Maybe it will be best to rip up all the pawpaw trees you just planted. But in case you decide you still want ananas in your life, I will discuss some ways to mitigate the risks in the second part of this video. What follows is not medical advice, so consult with your preferred medical doctor or nutritionist. They may know less on ananas than your grandmother, but they can always use generative artificial intelligence to answer your questions. Anonas have been consumed for mm. centuries, if wow. not millennia. However, this does not mean they cannot incapacitate or worse, kill you. Mm. Recent events have shown us that some cheap drugs that were regularly prescribed by doctors for decades were suddenly deemed unsafe or ineffective. Fortunately, with perfect timing, other safer and more effective solutions, albeit much more expensive, were quickly deployed thanks to the ingenuity of some of the brightest minds of our time. I'd have to laugh at that. <laughs> to be more specific, the dangers of consuming ananas were first investigated in this 1999 study by a French team in Guadeloupe, French West Indies. They basically investigated a potential link between a high frequency of atypical Parkinson syndrome and the consumption of tea and fruits from the Anonasi family, namely sorsops and sweet sops. Atypical Parkinson disease is resistant to levodopa an important drug used in the treatment of other Parkinson's syndromes. On a side note, it is interesting to read that the scientists refer to sweet soap and sour soap as pawpaw, knowing that the pawpaw fruits do not grow in the French West Indies. Maybe in Creole language, the sour soap is called pawpaw. I know that there is sometimes a confusion between pawpaw and papaya. In 2004, another French team further investigated the possible link with atypical Parkinson by focusing on ananasine the most abundant compound of the anonaceous acetogenin family found in Sarsop. I will add a link to a video at the end of this one, where I talk a bit more about anonaceous acetogenin. The scientists in the study found that lab rats exposed to anonacin showed lesions in brain cells that were similar to those in patients with atypical Parkinsonism. The neurotoxicity of anonacin was confirmed by other studies, like this one in 2006, in vivo with lab rats and in vitro on cultured neural cells. Strangely enough, there was a renewed interest on the dangers of consuming anonas in 2018 in this online forum on growing fruit trees. This time the focus was on pawpaws. Some of the forum members even alluded to Neil Peterson showing signs of Parkinson's disease on a video posted online. For those of you who do not know about Neil Peterson, he is the breeder of some well-known pop-up cultivars like Sushkana and Shenandoah. This prompted Mr. Peterson to jump in the conversation to explain that his tremors were not caused by Parkinson's disease, but were side effects from the lithium he took under medical prescription against cluster headaches. Interestingly, this thread went on for years until April 2020, when another worldwide health event took center stage. I guess the fear factor about Anonas did not quite match that of the worldwide event. If anything, this story on Neil Peterson should remind us to be cautious about any finding, even from scientific teams. Indeed, going back to the 1999 study, no direct correlation, let alone causation, was established between people suffering from Parkinson's disease and their consumption of soursop fruit or tea. Again, what was observed and studied was an unusually high proportion of patients suffering from a specific form of Parkinson's disease, namely atypical Parkinson, within the population of patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. To be more specific, in Europe and North America, that proportion was 20%, while in the Guadeloupe study population, the proportion was 34%, from my understanding. Actually, the criteria the French team used to diagnose atypical Parkinson was challenged, like here. And in a nutshell, the research team replied that further post-mortem studies of the Guadeloupe patients would help. 
Also, it cannot be ruled out that other risk factors are in play when it comes to atypical Parkinson in the French West Indies. For example, this 2008 study shows that there could be some genetic predisposition to sensitivity to anonacin and Guadeloupe atypical Parkinson syndrome. As a background info, Guadeloupe used to be a French colony, and the genetic makeup of its population reflects this past history. As for the results of in vivo studies on lab rats, it should be noted that the scientists injected the rats for 28 days with purified anonacin extracts from sarsop roots. Some rats had a low dose, 3.8 mg per kilogram per day, other rats had a high dose, 7.6 mg per kilogram per day. Let's do the math. The pulp of an average sarsop fruit contains about 15 mg of anonacin, according to this 2005 study. For an average human male specimen weighing 80 kg, the low dose will be equivalent to ingesting 304 mg of anonacin, or about 20 sarsop fruits every day for 28 days. The high dose will be equivalent to 40 sarsops every day for 28 days. Even if I had the money, Getting 20 to 40 sarsops every day from all the grocery stores near me will be difficult. And I'm not sure my digestive system can withstand this volume of fruit. What about sarsop leaf tea? Based on the same source, one cup infusion contains about 0.14 mg of anonacin. So to get a low dose, the average human male needs to drink 2,171 cups of sarsop leaf tea and more than 4,000 cups for the high dose every day for 28 days. I'm happy I'm not a lab rat. The results of in vivo studies on cultured neural cells cannot be ignored. That being said, since those early studies, many other studies have been performed on anonacin and anonaceous acetogenins in general. The studies have shown that anonaceous acetogenins are effective against many cancers in vitro, inducing death in cancer cells resistant to even chemotherapies. The takeaway from my point of view is that while purified anonacin is toxic to cultured neural cells, the compound is also toxic against other cells, notably cancerous cells in a lab setting. And by the way, in 2010, the French Food Safety Agency concluded that it is not possible to confirm that observed cases of atypical Parkinson syndrome are linked to the consumption of sarsop. In any case, how to mitigate the risk while enjoying anonas for their taste and potential health benefits? First. I avoid injecting myself intravenously with purified anonacin extracts. I like to believe that some fruit trees like ananas have developed a symbiotic relationship with the animal kingdom, including humans, to help propagate the seeds and that it will not really make sense for the plants to try to slowly kill us. A case in point, papaws are tropical fruit trees that adapted to temperate climates, probably thanks to the early North America human inhabitants. It cannot be ruled out that there could be other compounds in the fruits that negate or lower the toxicity of anonacin to neural cells. It can also be argued that our digestive system, including the liver, contributes to degrading the toxicity of anonacin. Also, making sarsop tea by boiling the leaves degrades acetogenic compounds and potentially lowers their toxicity compared with other methods of extraction used in the lab studies to obtain purified anonacin with methanol, for example. In order to further reduce the acetogenin content of the leaves, timing of the harvest is also a factor to consider. For example, this 1999 study shows that the acetogenin extracts from May and June are the most potent. While this study was performed on papa twigs, it provides a basis for the hypothesis that acetogenin activity in anonas is highest when the trees are experiencing rapid growth. Until more specific studies are conducted on sarsop leaves, I will continue to harvest the leaves of my sarsop tree when they are about to fall, and avoid harvesting young leaves. By the way, have you ever wondered which of the anona fruits, the sarsop or the papaw, has the highest anonacin content? We already saw that the average sarsop fruit contains 15 mg of anonacin. This paper indicates that the average concentration of anonacin in the pulp of a papa is about 0.07 mg per gram. Assuming that an average papa weighs about 230 grams with 160 grams of pulp, an average papa therefore contains about 11 mg of anonacin. Based on these numbers, an average papa contains less anonacin than an average sarsop. However, the anonacin content is only part of the story. 
This 2009 paper from Kentucky State University focused on the bioactivity of extracts from various anonas by analyzing mortality rates of shrimps exposed to the extracts. The article shows that sweet soap, more specifically cherry moya, presents very low acetogen in bioactivity compared with sour soap, and sour soap has lower acetogen in bioactivity than pawpaw, although the sample used for sour soap was canned pulp, which is less bioactive than frozen pulp. The pawpaw sample used for the study was frozen pulp. For the pawpaw lovers worried about toxicity of the fruit, acetogen in bioactivities of various pawpaw cultivars have also been analyzed, although the main purpose of this analysis was to identify the best cultivars for the extraction of acetogen in compounds for their anti-tumor and insecticidal properties. Bioactivities were highest with Middletown, Mitchell, NC1, Overlis, Shushkahana, Taylor, and Taitu cultivars. Bioactivities were lowest with Sunflower, Wabash, and Wells cultivars, while Potomac and Zimmerman cultivars display intermediate bioactivities. With regards to the low bioactivity of acetogen in, in sweet soap compared with that of sour soap and pawpaw, this recent study from Australia in 2023 shows that the concentration of acetogenins in Itemoya fruits is very low compared with that in the leaves, whereas the seeds were found to contain the highest concentrations and greatest diversity of compounds. So I will continue to eat sour soap, sweet soap and pawpaw fruits and avoid eating their seeds, bark and roots. Actually, eating the seeds never crossed my mind anyway. Finally, a simple way to mitigate the risk is moderation. While I cannot possibly eat anona fruits every day because of funding and availability, let alone 20 to 40 fruits every day, drinking sauce up leaf tea on a more regular basis could be feasible with the quantity of leaves I harvest every year from my potted sauce up tree. But as far as I'm concerned, I only drink the tea on special occasions, spreading the consumption of my annual harvest over the course of a full year. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content like this.